Hey everyone, so we're going to do the next video in this series where we're working with stored procedures in SQL Server and we're working with SQL data sources in uh, Visual Studio. And we're working through the CRUD operations. We've already covered the uh, reading, uh, which was our first example. Now we're going to deal with the creating. So how do we insert new data? And so um, let's go ahead and create a, another page just to keep the solution clean or the demonstration clean. We'll create a new web form and this will be insert. Um, and we're going to keep the departments the same. We could insert a department or an employee. We're going to we're going to insert an employee. And for this demonstration, this again, this is stored procedures and SQL data source. CRUD operations, and this is going to be insert data into a database. So I can copy from our last demonstration, but instead of reading data, we're going to insert data into a table. And so this is insert employee, stored procedure in SQL data source, creating insert data into a table. So let's jump into our uh, management studio. You can see our two stored procedures from before. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new stored procedure. And using the template, uh, I'm just going to call this SP stored procedure insert employee. Now looking at the employee table on the left, we have the auto incrementing column. We have three values that we need to uh, account for, which are all going to be parameters. We need the first name, last name, and department ID, all coming from parameters. You can see uh, the syntax for the parameters here, separated by commas, uh, and the, basically the parameter name followed by its data type. So let's start with our first uh, parameter called first name. And let's match the data type for first name in the in the table. It is an nvarchar 50. Let's do the same for the last name, uh, which is also nvarchar 50. And let's take one for the department. ID, which was an integer. Now the syntax for an insert statement is insert into, let's, let's go ahead and change our database into Rankin, so we're getting IntelliSense, insert into employee values at what's passed into the first name what's passed into the last name, and what's passed into the department ID. Click that. Close our parenthesis. And so we're going to insert employee with three parameters. Insert into that table, all three of those parameters. And we can execute here and the command completed successfully um, so if we refresh our stored procedure we could see insert employee has been created and just to uh, demonstrate real quick I went ahead and um, highlighted uh, the stored procedure uh, with some dummy data and just to test to see if this works. So we went ahead and inserted a new employee using the values uh, Joe Dirt and he's in administration. And so if we uh, were to select our top rows, you could see that our stored procedure worked. Uh, it inserted our new employee into um, department two, which belongs to administration. <coughs> Uh, so our stored procedure is working. Let's go ahead and create the web form then. In the web form, uh, we need some controls 
uh, to uh, allow people to type in a new employee name and select their department. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is add a SQL data source. Let's go ahead and configure the data source to use our rank and connection string. Works with the correct database. We're going to specify a stored procedure. Now, uh, notice here, if I just jump over to my insert stored procedure and I select insert employee, I cannot click on next. Um, that's because this tool is going to require you to include a select statement. Um, so I'll go ahead and use my get department data since I know I'm going to be using this the department data for the drop down list and then the insert um, uh, now you uh, the insert will say insert employee but the select will be department data now it allows us to continue on you can see if we test the query it's just testing the select statement which is the same as before um, so let's go ahead and just take a glance at the code here because this is important. We have insert parameters for the first, last name, and department ID. Um, these are the parameters that it's expecting to come from the web form and pass into the stored procedure. And here if we scroll along, you can see the insert command is a stored procedure called SP insert employee. And we have a little bit of our select uh, information in there as well. So this is, again, we're going to come back to this. Let's go ahead and build out our, our web form. Let's have our drop-down list. And so we can drag and drop drop-down list. Tell it to use data source 1. The field to display is going to be the name. The field for the value is going to be the ID, same as before. Enable auto post back. Let's go ahead and save that and make sure that's still working. Good. Now, we need some controls to allow someone to enter in a first name. So let's go ahead and put in a. Uh, fan tag for someone's first name and I'm going to make an ASP control text box and you could drag and drop this is fine but I'm going to say text first name run at the server so we have uh, some controls going on the page. I'm going to copy that and paste it for someone's last name. Text last name. Put in a line break. And finally, let's put another line break. And let's add an ASP button. ID is button submit. Run at the server. Text is, we're going to have it say create employee. Okay, so we ask for the department. <clears throat> Select employee department. So we ask for the department. I don't need these paragraph tags. Put in the line break, a little clean up. Okay, nice and clean markup there. Um, let's go ahead and create the event handler for the button submit. And this is where uh, I said that we were going to come back. To the insert parameters and reference these parameter names and so uh, we're going to have to write some c-sharp code here so we're going to reference our sql data source one dot insert parameters and we're going to pass it the first name now this 
this first name references the first parameter that we're going to pass from from our controls and we need to set its default value equal to uh, whatever they type in at the text box text first name dot text and so that's how we set the insert parameters from the text box into the SQL data source and you could probably imagine what the other two lines of code look like um, we're now working with the last name parameter and instead of text first name dot text we're working with text uh, I forgot to put text last name but it's text last dot text didn't have a consistent naming convention but you get the point and our last one our last insert parameter is going to come from the drop down list So the department ID, default value, and our drop-down list is still the default name, drop-down list one dot selected value. Again, it's that integer value uh, represented by uh, the department that you select. I'm going to have a simple try catch block now where we're going to try and SQL data source one dot insert. We're going to actually run the insert command. And if it works, let's go ahead and insert a, uh, a label here, ASP label, uh, ID is label result, it's going to be blank at first, and we need to tell it to run at the server, which is why I'm getting this error creating control run at server, you can see it's blank by default. If it works, we'll say label result dot text equals employee had been created. If it doesn't work, we'll just put the label result dot text equal to the message from the exception. Uh, let's choose a different name, EX. We had we had two names with the same two two values with the same uh, excuse me, two variables with the same name. So okay. Let's go ahead and try this all out. So let's right click, view in browser. So let's insert a new employee into our table. It says employee has been created exclamation points. So that's all good. Uh, let's close our example then, open back management studio and run a query on the employee table just to verify employee number 10 is Ashley Reddick and he belongs in IT. If we run the page again, let's select another automotive employee and employee employee has been created let's close it down run our select statement and there you can see our new employee created in the uh, department ID of four and so uh, that concludes the example of creating new or inserting new values into uh, a table using a stored procedure uh, up next we will do, which one do I want to pick? We've done read, we've done create. Let's go ahead and do update. We'll do update next. So that's in the next video.